Harry Potter, I've watched the first one, and I think I read the first one. I read the first one, but then I was like, these books are stupid. <laughs> and then I watched the movies, and I really liked the movies. Wow. <laughs> I didn't like the books. <laughs> Oh my God, I mean, yeah, there's top five. I would have to say Back to the Future was very yeah. big for me. Yeah. Blade Runner was really big for me. Anything Indiana Jones was really big for me. Um, I, I just- all three Back to the Futures on VHS. Dude, they just, something magical about the playfulness of those movies, yeah. you know, um, was extraordinary to me. I love Blade Runner. I mean, the original Blade Runners was so cool. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. I quoted that at Justice yesterday. Like at Justice and Sophia, I was like, these, these would be lost like tears and rain. They were like, what is that? And I was like, no! Are you it, kidding? Like, it? you know the, the speech at the end? Like oh, all these memories will be lost like tears and rain? Yeah. All those moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. And I was like, we gotta get, we gotta, we gotta well, get that back. Well, it's based on here. that book, uh, uh, sh uh, 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 Dreams of Electric. The Android's Dream of Electric. Yeah, yeah. that one. Dungeons and Dragons, I thought it was pretty good. Um, uh. <laughs> God, I don't know what else I've seen recently. I'm so sorry. Like I spent, it feels like I've been on this tour forever. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Beautiful. I, I think that you know it was really fantastic that somebody was able to capture that on a serious note and not in a big giant sci-fi movie, because mm. you know obviously you know you've had it in all the Marvels and all of these. It's been a subject for the last ten years that has been exploited in Hollywood, and I thought it was a really original take on the on the idea. It's almost like the collective consciousness of humanity reached a space that opened up and the contemporary world now has the imagination stretched out enough to believe in other dimensions. And I think that's very beautiful. And now maybe we could take it back and go spiritual with it. <laughs> Imaginative movies. Yeah, really cool. Yes, so. <laughs> I've liked fantasy. I liked Never Ending Story. I remember I, I read the book every single day. I liked Willow when I was a kid. I, I liked all the Harry Potter movies. Harry Potter, I've watched the first one, and I think I read the first one. I read the first one, but then I was like, these books are stupid. <laughs> and then I watched the movies, and I really liked the movies. Wow. <laughs> I didn't like the books. Never Ending Story was one that was very influential. Didn't always have the highest production values necessarily, but on the budget they had, it really stuck with me. So that's part of why we did a lot of practical effects in this movie and not just digital ones, because you can feel that difference. There's something tactile about well, it. Well, to that end, the thing that inspired me was Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park, which was a perfect example of being able to use practical effects in a way that hadn't been done before with state-of-the-art technology and animatronics, but also state-of-the-art vision visual effects that brings it together in this hybrid that I think hadn't been done before. And we really wanted to embrace that. And Princess Bride tonally was an interesting comic because it was so funny, but very much of a fantasy, traditional, fairy tale kind of a story. And add to that the fact that we love Monty Python and the Holy Grail and definitely nodded to that tone as well. <laughs>